Now, this is quite an unusual shot because the model is uh, upside down. And it's so that we can have a look at these um, adjustments to put the trailer legs down. Um, as you can see, they're sort of two separate trailer legs, one on each side. Um, and unfortunately, you need to pull this little tab to raise and lower them, which means whenever you wish to connect the trailer to the truck, you have to pull that tab and either raise or lower these legs. Um, and then you have to come around the other side of the trailer and raise or lower the other leg, which is a great shame, um, especially considering that these trailers have got a fifth wheel that's electrically operated. So you can uh, control the fifth wheel release on your uh, radio control, but these legs you have to do manually. And usually if it's down on the ground, you usually have to get down on your knees. So I came to thinking that there's got to be a better way of doing this. So I've come up with a, a product which might help. So what I've come up with is the, um, these little uh, electric screw jacks, which essentially do exactly the same as the jacks that operate the uh, legs and the elevation of the missiles, but much tinier, as you can see by the uh, size of the remote control for scale. Um, I'll show you in a second how these operate. Now the control mechanism is quite simple. Um, it's a little push button key fob, a very tiny receiver and um, I've just picked a six volt um, little 400 milliamp uh, nickel metal hydride battery. Um, so what I'm hoping to do is to mount two of those onto the model to replace the manual adjustment. Okay, well next move is to remove the existing manual legs. Um, what I've done is take off the uh, circlip that's holding the bottom end and then on the uh, top end up here I've taken out the screws that are holding the uh, triangular part of the leg in place. So this should come out fairly easily. Just a question of um, extracting the rod that goes through here. And then that should lift out and the little bracket should come off the end of that. There we go. Okay, so that's the whole assembly um, out and free. What we can now do is replace this section with the electric leg. So I'll put that down there for the time being. One thing that we will have to do um, is these little these little uh, mounting points will need to be reversed so that this part here is actually there. So what I should do is I'll take out the one screw, swing it round and then keep it in place with the other screw. It won't go anywhere because of the uh, fact that the leg will be going through it so it won't be able to turn. Um, I may just drill another hole in to tap into that if I can get a small enough tapping kit. Now as you can see the, uh, the new electric actuator is a lot thinner at the end than the original. So actually takes two uh, M3 nuts um, 
fill the space quite nicely and make up for it. Uh, the reason why um, I've chosen to put the thin end of the actuator here, uh, basically the reverse of how the original was, is because the wiring um, comes out at the thick end and that's going to be, the wiring is going to be the point nearest the um, front of the trailer, just to make life easier. Um, I had a look at this to see whether or not this was going to look ridiculous compared to the original. Um, and the original actually doesn't have the same mechanism as this at all. Um, it does have a manual mechanism for raising and lowering it, but it doesn't look anything like this. So um, it's not going to be too much of a problem. The other thing you note, obviously, straight away is the fact that the electric actuator is quite a bit longer uh, when retracted than the manual one. Now, these electric actuators actually come in two sizes, and there is one that's this length, um, which you would think would be um, more appropriate. Uh, but unfortunately, when it's extended, fully extended, it only comes out to this length. And when the manual um, arm is extended, it comes out to this length. So therefore we've had to go with the next size up which is the uh, bigger of the electric ones, because that comes out when extended to be just a little bit longer than the manual one. So, unfortunately, yeah, would have been nice to use the shorter one, but it just didn't uh, come out far enough to support the legs. So, uh, that's the, uh, the one we're going to use. Uh, and because of that, it just means that we're going to have to move the um, move the mounting plate at the front slightly forward to uh, make sure that we retract this enough when uh, when it's uh, when it's fully retracted. Okay, I'll show you it when I've fitted it. All right, that's the first one is in place, um, mounted up at that end with the uh, <clears throat> two, three um, M3 nuts either side, and then down on this bracket here with two M3 washers either side of the uh, actuator. As you can see from the holes, I've actually moved that forwards a little bit, probably only about a centimetre and a half, just to get us a little bit of, uh, a little bit more retraction. Um, power wise what I've done is I've taken a lead from this little battery box here uh, down into the main part of the chassis and just fed it through coming out into the void underneath the uh, plate at the front and this is then connected to the little receiver. You'll notice that the receiver has a uh, small black antenna on it, springy antenna. Um, and what I have to do with that, I have to drill a hole for that to come out because this box here is going to be a lovely sealed metal box, uh, which forms a Faraday cage, which means we get no signal into it. So um, there'll be a hole for that drilled in the plate. There'll also be a hole for the uh, wires to both of the actuators, one each side, and then there'll be a hole for a switch. So there'll be four holes across this plate, um, which will end up looking a little bit like that. Pardon the shape of the holes, I used a very rough, uh, very rough foil to uh, file the edges down. But uh, yeah, so I'll fit the other one, and then we'll do a quick test make sure everything works okay and then I'll solder up the electronics well there we are um, two holes for the wires, one hole for the switch, one hole for the antenna coming up from the receiver all, all screwed back into place and just remains to demonstrate the beast
Need to switch it on, of course. A lot faster than the uh, legs, but then nowhere near the power, of course. Well, there we go. Um, I'll do a little video of it connecting and disconnecting sometime, but no hurry for that. So, uh, nice little project.